welcome back so after dealing with the problem involving the second law in the last snippet let us deal with a similar problem not with a compressor but with a nozzle so let me just read out the problem the inlet conditions for the nozzle of a steam turbine are 60 bar 350 degrees centigrade the exit conditions are 10 bar 0.9 dry what do we have to find out a if the steam flow rate is 10000 kg per hour determine the exit velocity and area and b is the process possible or impossible why what is the limiting exit state and exit velocity assume that the exit pressure is fixed now how do we approach this the last time around we had figured out that the process was not possible and gone ahead and done a lot of calculations using the first law. Now, let us first find out since it is easier to find out whether the process is possible, we will go ahead and do that first. Now, you will notice that there is nothing mentioned regarding whether the process is adiabatic or not, that is whether there is heat transfer or not, but right now since there is nothing given, we can only assume that q dot is 0 and if q dot is equal to 0, we know that because s dot p has to be positive the exit entropy has to be greater than the inlet entropy. So, let us go ahead and do those calculations. So, we will do it systematically, draw the diagrams, figure out whether something is possible or not. This is our nozzle and we had inlet 60 bar 350 degrees centigrade and we had exit at 10 bar and 0.9 dry which means the dryness fraction is 0 0.9 and m dot is given as 10,000 kilogram per hour. So, because we know the inlet state 60 bar 350 degree centigrade, it is in the superheated zone, we look up the superheated tables at 6 mega Pascal because that is what is 60 bar. 350 degrees centigrade and we get that h i should be equal to 3043.9 kilo joule per kg and similarly s i is equal to 6.3357 kilo joule per kg kelvin. What about exit? So, this is at inlet. What about exit? We know that it is 10 bar, which means this is 1 mega Pascal and it is 0 0.9 dry. So, we can find h easily, this would be 0 0.9 multiplied by h f g at 1 mega Pascal plus h f at 1 mega Pascal and we would get this as 2575. 0.66 kilo joule per kg. So, this is H e, we would go ahead and do a similar exercise 0 0.9 multiplied by S f g plus S f and we realize that we get this as 6.1404 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Now, we draw our H s diagram. This is our inlet to the nozzle. So, uh, let me write this P i, this is P e, this is i and we would have expected an ideal process to go like this if it was adiabatic and we are assuming q dot equal to 0 because nothing is mentioned about it. So, in that case, we expect that S e should be greater than S i or the process should have been in this fashion. So, this should have been E star and this should have been E, but what do we notice? We notice that S i is 6.3357 and S e is 6.1404, both of these kilo joule per kg Kelvin and S e is actually less than S i, which means that we are expecting 
that the process would go in this fashion and this is E given. So, this is just not possible because we have assumed q dot is equal to 0, which would have meant that S e should have been greater than S i and we find that S e is actually less than S i, which means this is not possible. What would have been possible is if exit E was equal to E star or greater than E star. So, let us go ahead with our calculations assuming that we get S e equal to S i that is our ideal exit state. So, in this case go ahead assuming S e equal to S i which means E equal to E star. So, if this is so, we realize that let me draw this diagram again it's P i P e i E star this is what we are getting. So, we know what S is here. So, let us just find out that S e is also equal to 6.3357 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, this means we will need to find our dryness fraction here x. So, we will just go ahead and find it. We will use 6.3357 and subtract the S f at this point which is 2.1381. We will look at the tables for 1 mega Pascal and divide by S f g which is 4.44 seven zero and this will turn out to be zero point nine four three nine. So that means that E star would have been a more drier state than what was given in the problem. And in fact if the process is actually irreversible, it will be even more drier and we should not be surprised if it was completely dry. So what is H? Now it is very simple. We use this X multiply it by HFG, which is the same HFG as before and add H f. So, both of these are at 1 mega Pascal and we get this as 2664.1 kilo joule per kg and this should be a quantity that is greater than the previous quantity. So, this is H e. We also would like to calculate the specific volume that is because uh, we have been asked to find out the velocity and the area. We get V e here which is the specific volume. We go ahead and do a similar procedure. I would not do it here. It is 0.18352 meter cube per kg. So, now we find out m dot we convert it into kgs per second instead of the kilogram per r units that have been given. So, I just have to divide by 3600 and I would get 2.7778 kilogram per second. Now, we can write our first law. We have Q dot minus W dot S is equal to M dot H E minus H I plus V E squared by 2 minus V I squared by 2 plus G z e minus z i. We realize that we have assumed this is adiabatic. So, this is 0. This is a nozzle, no work is expected. This is 0 and nothing has been mentioned about the heights. It is a good assumption to go ahead and assume that this is 0. And in this calculation, we realize that we do not need the mass flow rate now, because all we get is h e minus h i should be equal to v i squared by 2 minus v e squared by 2. And now, we realize that we do not know the inlet velocity, but in such nozzles it is a good assumption that it is a reasonably negligible velocity compared to the exit velocity. In fact, the nozzle is meant to accelerate the fluid to a higher velocity. So, we say that this is nearly equal to 0, which means that we get V e squared by 2 is equal to H i minus H e. So, all we have to do now 
calculate this. So, V e squared is nothing but 2 multiplied by h i minus h e and we see that this would be we have to convert this into joule per kg. So, we multiply it by, uh, so we first substitute the values h i was um, 3043.9 and h e now we have calculated as 2664.1 and we multiply this by 1000 so that our units are correct. We need it in joule per kg and we get now V e should be equal to 871.55 meters per second. This is a pretty large velocity and now since we have m dot should be equal to A e V e by specific volume at the exit. We know m dot this is 2.7778 we know this, this is 871.55, we know this, this is 0 0.18352, we substitute these values and get the exit area as 5.849 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. So, we have made a few assumptions here, but those are reasonably logical for the nozzle. We have assumed it is adiabatic, there is no change in inlet and exit heights and the inlet velocity is 0. Of course, we first figured out whether the problem as given was possible, we discovered it was not possible, we figured out what was the limiting state and went ahead by solving for that limiting state. So, these are the answers for the limiting state, they are not for the problem as given, we are trying to find out what the velocity at the exit is and the area at the exit is for the limiting state. Thank you.